Welcome to Living Healthy Every Day. I'm Jacob Gordon. I'm here with Jeff Palmer, CEO of Clean Machine. Jeff, tell me a little bit about yourself. You're vegan, right? Yeah, so I've been vegan for 31 years. So uh, back then, there really wasn't a lot of the uh, materials that are available today, like the internet. There was no internet. Um, cell phones. There were mm -hmm. cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of the books and uh, information available that are, are, are now, all the movies that are out, the, all the educational stuff, which is great. But back then, I, I really kind of had to come to it on my own. Uh, yeah. I never heard of anybody else being vegan. Vegetarian, yes, but I never even heard the word vegan. Actually, Somebody told me I was vegan after I became vegan for about a so year. So there was, there was when, when was the, the term vegan coined, do you know? I think it was coined actually uh, much further back than that in, uh, in England. Uh, the vegan society started there. Um, but what didn't really get into more common use until the 60s here in the United States. So, mm -hmm. so what made you vegan? Like what? Yeah, so why, I, why did you get on that path? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's unusual uh, path in that um, I kind of came to it through um, a personal breakthrough of my own. Mm -hmm. um, so I was I was going through depression uh, in my early twenties, coming out of um, high school and into college, and really just trying to search for myself. But I had a lot mm -hmm. of yeah, uh, yeah. Had a lot of problems that I was going through at the time, and uh, fell into depression. Um, uh, a good friend of mine really helped me through a big breakthrough and I just felt such an overwhelming thankfulness and gratefulness I asked myself simply what could I do to create less suffering to others because mm -hmm. I felt I released so much suffering in my own life I wanted to give that gift back to others so um, I sat and really just meditated all night long and it came to me just stop harming animals mm -hmm. and so I became vegetarian that day, and um, about a month later, became vegan and been vegan for so thirty years. So cut out years. dairy and eggs and all that. Everything, yeah. Everything. Yeah. So. And how did you feel from that? I felt amazing. Amazing. Such yeah. clarity. Um, a lot of things I wasn't expecting. I I felt really transpersonal experiences mm -hmm. changing. I saw better taste, better sight, better hearing clarity. So all your senses were, were heightened, enhanced. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. So it, it, was a, it was a huge transition in my life, but it really got me to see the whole world around me differently. Mm -hmm. Instead of seeing the negatives, I saw the positives. Yeah. You know, because I felt I was doing positive. When you're in that space of contributing positively, you see the positive. It's mm -hmm. just, absolutely, I call absolutely. it the uh, Volkswagen Beetle effect. Yeah. If you yeah. ever buy a Volkswagen Beetle, you start to see them everywhere, uh -huh, right? Yeah. And I think, <laughs> I think once you embrace or recognize that positivity in yourself, you can begin to You can to see, see it, it in other people in the whole world, absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah. and because I was able to see it, that just kind of fed on itself. You yeah. know, when you see positivity, it <laughs> so, makes you So you're happy. able to build on this. <laughs> yes. This, yeah, positive so, feedback and so, all that, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and it, it, it just really, it changed who I was and, uh, and the way I interacted with the world. So then I was on a mission to say, wow, um, these changes were happening physically in my body too. And I was a bio psych major in college mm -hmm. and looking at the way physiology changed our mood and behavior. Well, I said, well, well, this has got to be doing something then. So I yeah. started really researching it, but in, at the university level, it was all based on drugs. And I was like, no, there's more to that. There's food, there's mm -hmm. exercise, there's other things mm -hmm. that contribute. The whole holistic side of it, looking at the body as a whole. Correct. All that. And I'm mm -hmm. like, they're missing all this point. So I really focused my own personal research on, okay, let's look at nutrition and, and look at exercise mm -hmm. and see how these things affect mood and behavior. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw these amazing connections and I'm like, this this is a story that needs to get out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I started working in the nutritional field, health and nutritional, with natural food companies, um, uh, retailers, and and uh, eventually sports nutrition companies because I love athletics. I was mm -hmm. a swimmer in, in high school and into AAU. Oh, wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. so I saw what physical yeah. changes <laughs> happen when you really push yourself. Uh -huh. and I loved it, the health benefits that come with it too. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and I was working at uh, 24 Hour Fitness, uh, I was the senior buyer there, and I, looking at the data they had on what is the reason, main reason, why people don't stay with exercise. Mm -hmm. It's because they don't get results quick enough. So I was like, well, how can I I think they say that uh, it takes um, two weeks for you to realize it, realize it, four weeks for someone else to realize it, like someone close to you, and then I think eight weeks for a whole, I f I'm messing up the numbers here, but like a whole, uh, the whole audience, whole everyone to see your results. 
Right, and for a lot of people, and especially in this they day want and instant age, results. <laughs> they want really they fast see, results. They see they uh, see what happens right now should happen like right now, or the the because the the media is, it's what they're showing. Right. Yeah. So the two things I wanted to one help them get results sooner, mm -hmm. one do it in a natural and healthy approach, working with their body, but two show them how the body works. So I'm, I'm just as big on education as I am on giving the products that can actually help them. Mm -hmm. I want to show them what's going on inside the body so they learn how to work with this amazing piece of machinery yeah, that, we yeah, have, yeah. that we're carrying this around. This self-healing mechanism we've got. It's an incredible yeah. gift. Um, you know, not to offend anybody's religious sensibilities, but uh, in one of my favorite biology teachers was a Jesuit priest. Mm -hmm and wore his collar and everything. And he's teaching a science class. That's hilarious. So I went up to him and I said, you know, do you see a dichotomy here? You uh -huh. know, is, is, there, is this an oxymoron? And he mm -hmm. goes, no, not at all. He goes, the more I understand through science about nature, about physical reality, the more it makes me believe <laughs> th this is a miracle. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> and I said, wow, that's a neat connection. And, yeah. and I really feel that too. The more I, I study, the more I feel what an amazing design this, this physicality is. Mm -hmm. And it's constantly changing and adapting. And that's amazing, yeah. you know, that it's taking whatever reality throws at us and adapting to it. Mm -hmm. uh, our our body is such an amazing tool that billions of years, millions, hundreds of millions of years has allowed this mechanism to, to work the way it does. So that led yeah. me to some research about these intracellular structures called mm -hmm. heat shock proteins. Okay. Heat shock proteins are actually little balls of protein, mm -hmm. but they just look like structures, but they don't. They actually carry out functions. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they're alive. Yeah. Are sentient because they know what to do based on it. They are what's actually caused the adaptation. Because when I was looking at adaptogenic herbs and, and mushrooms and things, mm -hmm. I said, you know, everything in nature is unilateral, unidirectional. Either it stimulates something or it depresses or inhibits mm -hmm. something. Either calms not, something down or raises yeah, the yeah. Up. yeah. Now, it's something that's uh, Why are boosty, adaptogens yeah. doing both? Mm -hmm. How can it go two different directions? Well, actually they don't. So what is adaptogens for people who don't know what they okay, are? Okay, so there is a small group of herbs and food, some food sources, but mushrooms too as well, that are called adaptogenic. That They actually help our body adapt to different stressors, mm -hmm. whether it's cold or heat or radiation or any of the different stressors, mechanical stress like working out, muscle growth is an adaptation process. Mm -hmm. Our body says, wait a minute, that's more weight than I can handle, let's add some more muscle. So both physical stress and physical, what, what chemical, kind of stress? Stress, chemical stress, emotional, emotional and, okay. and psychological stresses. Mm -hmm. All the different stress, toxicology, all those stresses require heat shock proteins to actually repair the damage, re restructure the cell, mm -hmm. or go in and change the actual DNA itself. Really? Yes. Wow, that's pretty fascinating. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so they can actually do what's called DNA repair. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Eleuthero does some yes, of that, extends exactly. the telomeres. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are ways, so there's two things in the DNA. You can, there's gene switching, mm -hmm. or, or um, and then which you can turn on and off genes. Mm -hmm. um, so they can lay their dormant and never turn on in your entire life, mm -hmm. or you can consume something or which activates that or which activates okay. that and triggers it to turn on mm -hmm. produce a different enzyme that now you may need produce a different neurotransmitter mm -hmm. produce a different chemical produce a different protein mm -hmm. all these things can be activated or inactivated well so our, our genes have a also have a timeline so yes. later in age you'll activate certain genes will turn on correct to produce let's say you need an enzyme for a certain function absolutely a good yeah. example of that is um, um, going through the weaning process. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a gene that turns off at about the age of two in humans um, that allows lactase to be produced. Mm -hmm. Okay, lactase is the enzyme that breaks down milk sugar. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, what that does is it, it uh, forces the baby not to be able to digest milk very well. Mm -hmm. So the sugars don't digest and therefore the bacteria get them instead. Mm -hmm. And it blows them up with diarrhea and gas and uncomfortableness <laughs> and they're like, Oh, no, I don't want that anymore. Yeah. That's making so, me feel so they terrible. Stop, so stop they stop. It. Uh -huh. It's the natural weaning process. And then they go on the cow's milk, and unfortunately. Then they force, and then <laughs> they're now, forced to what had happened with uh, the uh, 
with whites, basically, Europeans, mm -hmm. is they continue to drink milk even after the weaning process. Mm -hmm. And over time, over time, the body said, well, if you're going to keep doing that, we better produce the enzyme. Mm -hmm. So it adapted it. And that's why lactose intolerance is high in Asians and blacks and just about basically everybody else but Caucasians mm -hmm. um, because it hasn't been in their diet. They weaned naturally. At two yeah. years, they stopped. Mm -hmm. Very good. They don't need <laughs> it anymore. Yeah. But we've overrode that process. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting example how what you do can force your body to adapt, even in a negative way, and n going against its natural ingrained processes. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to focus on looking at the science that's out there and say, how does the physiology work? What are the metabolic pathways? What are the systems that are intertwined with each other? How do we work with that? to help the body achieve what it's already trying to do naturally. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've created this product line, Clean Machine, in order to try to work with the body to get the optimal results using its own pathways, okay. not superseding yeah, absolutely. it. Yeah. So it's amazing that the human body has lots of different ways to achieve the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. There's usually multiple ways and what they call negative feedback loops, which is uh, yeah. ways of the body saying, okay, that's too much of that. Let's stop it by throwing this mm -hmm. inhibitor in there. So it's got lots of safety, you safety know, mechan mechanisms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't, doesn't go haywire go too far one way. Yeah. But again, through our d modern practices of diet and exposure mm -hmm. to toxins and chemicals, yeah, our environment and food, we're mm -hmm. screwing up that whole process. And I really want to get people back to a natural, clean, and healthy approach way of doing it, working with your body. Mm -hmm. So. So you've got three products here that yes. help regulate the body and, yes. and in certain ways. So let's, it looks like you got cell block 80 here. Correct, yeah. And that, let's, let's talk a little bit about hormones because I know it uh, regulates hormones and affects hormones and why people, people today possibly are, are feeling possibly depressed or, or just unwell uh, with mood swings and things like that and not feeling their, their, their well self. So like I know, uh, let's talk about men, for example, how uh, testosterone is about like 10 times higher in men than it is in women. And so cell block 80, that regulates testosterone and other hormones? Yeah, so, you know, I'm a believer of optimal states, mm -hmm. not over optimal states. Uh, more is not better in the human body. Mm -hmm. um, more or superfluous amounts is what triggers the negative side effects, mm -hmm. like the negative feedback loops. So for instance, if you have too high a level of testosterone, the body will actually start converting it to estrogen and DHT. Mm -hmm. Okay, those have their own sets of negative so side effects. So let's talk about what does testosterone do? Okay, testosterone is great for uh, building muscle. Mm -hmm. It stimulates the cell. It's kind of like the contractor who enters the cell and says, okay, let's build a new cell. Yeah. It sends that message to the DNA to start transcribing new proteins and build muscle. Mm -hmm. That's a given. That's understood. So most people understand the correlation between testosterone and building muscle, but it also affects libido, energy levels, um, confidence levels. So that Superman effect, you know, mm -hmm. you feel like, wow, I can take on the world today. That's your testosterone talking, both in men and women. So mm -hmm. um, uh, the flip side of that is confidence levels that are too high are arrogance. Or it turns into aggression kind aggression, of state. Okay. And violence. Mm -hmm. and the, see what you say, but not getting it too high because then it gets... Uh, so that's something that needs to be regulated. It's, yes. It can't be too low or too high. Correct. Mm -hmm. So trying to get it into the sweet spot. But and it does decrease with age, right? It can. And that's more to do, I believe, with habits. So your diet, your stress levels, your exercise. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All those things are at play. Cortisol, speaking of stress. Mm -hmm. So cortisol is what they call a catabolic hormone. It mm -hmm. can tear down things to get energy. So you release cortisol like you're being chased by a tiger. Mm -hmm. Okay, cortisol with the, is released. With the fight or flight mechanism, right. cortisol gets excreted. It makes your brain work really quickly, which mm -hmm. you need. Yeah. <laughs> and it starts immediately trying to gather a bunch of energy. So it can tear down, you know, grab fat, carbs, and proteins. So it can start tearing down muscle tissue that you're not using to actually use break open those branch chains and mm -hmm. use them for quick energy. It's trying to get as much quick energy because you may need to run, run hard, and run long. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so it's trying to scramble energy source. But that catabolic process tears down muscle. Okay, on the flip side, you've got testosterone. Usually goes up when you sleep, 
you're relaxed, you're calm, low cortisol levels, mm -hmm. it goes into healing and repairing mode, building muscle tissue. It's stimulated by exercise too as well, but because your body needs more of that to direct the cells to build. Mm -hmm. um, but they compete with each other. So there are similar receptor sites on the, on the cell itself, but one receptor site will say cortisol means tear down the cell. Mm -hmm. Testosterone says, no, build it. Okay. So you can't do both at the same you time. You can't, absolutely, yeah. You gotta do one or There's the other. There's only one receptor site, so it can't. Correct, so mm -hmm. if you wanna raise, if you raise cortisol too high, testosterone can't be active. Mm -hmm. It says, no, we're tearing, we're, this is a self-destruct mode here. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not building that thing. Uh -huh. And uh, the body mm -hmm. does go through a recycling process where you can replace that cell, but you're taking steps backwards to go forwards. Mm -hmm. So um, getting that cortisol level down is just as equally as important as getting that optimal testosterone level. So it's not just about testosterone levels. I hear so many people think just focus solely on testosterone. So they're actually so. What are the other hormones that we got to focus on? Five different things, key okay. things at play. There's okay, more than absolutely. that, but we'll touch mm -hmm. on these five. So one, how much is being replenished? Once you use your testosterone, how much can be replenished? Well, most of our testosterone comes from DHEA, um, mm -hmm. which is the master hormone, can convert to a lot of different hormones, including testosterone. Um, so you want good levels of DHEA to mm -hmm. replenish your testosterone once it's used. Otherwise, you have spikes and crashes, <laughs> just like yeah. with energy. What's, what's the enzyme that converts DHEA into Oh my God, that's testosterone. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a long word, and I can't think of it right off the okay, top of my yeah. head. <laughs> 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 it actually, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post it right here so okay, you can see it. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it converts DHEA to uh, androstenedione dione and then goes into okay. testosterone. So, uh, that's the pathway. And there are other pathways that the body can use by converting other things too, but this is a key one. So you want a good DHEA level. The central in this has been clinically proven in two published human studies to increase DHEA levels. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So now you've got the starting material. Yeah. Okay, now you get to the level of, okay, now you have what's called free testosterone. Free mm -hmm. testosterone is the active testosterone. But the body sees that and binds a lot of it to albumin, but also more importantly, this thing called sex hormone binding lobulin. Mm -hmm. Once it binds to it, you're done. That testosterone can never be used. Mm -hmm. It's inactive. So you can actually lose up to 80% of your testosterone to binding. Oh, wow. Yeah, so <laughs> most people don't realize that you can have yeah. as little as two to 3% of the testosterone you produce actually reaching the receptor site. Wow. Two to three percent. <laughs> that's so little. So, so, so uh, that's why a little yeah. bit of change in any one of these five different places can make a dramatic change in what actually reaches the receptor site mm -hmm. and imparts all the benefits that you want. Mm -hmm. So it's not how much you do. Now, there is a way by using testosterone to overload the system, to force it all the way to there, but then you create all these negative side effects. Mm -hmm. So once you have that free testosterone get past sex hormone binding globulin. And when we have two ingredients in it that have actually shown to bind to sex hormone binding globulin, so you have more free T. Okay, but if, now if you have more free T available, the body says, wow, okay, we're gonna start converting some of that to estrogen and some of that to DHT. Mm -hmm. So you can lose three to 5% on either side of that. You basically just cut your free T in half. Mm -hmm. Now. That's a big deal. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. So a lot of people don't even focus on that part at all. A lot of the supplement companies just focus on raising tea. Just one You can get it all bound, you mm -hmm. can have it convert to estrogen and DHT, create all these negative side effects. What are you ending up with at the cell? Not mm -hmm. much. So it's not imparting the effects, even so though you So is it a problem it. if, let's say you're looking at, I, I don't know if you know this, if you're looking at serum levels in the blood of hormones yes. to, to test how active they are in the cell, is that a good representation? Do you know? You can, but that requires biopsy usually. So um, if you want to look intracellular. Um, okay. Uh, and what you're looking at there is uh, transcription or, or, or how much proteins are being produced in the cell. And that's, that's a expensive process. But you can get your normal hormones tested either by blood draw or somewhat by saliva too as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but a blood draw will give you your full hormone panel of sex hormone binding globulin, of, of estrogen, of DHT levels. And it, you'll tell, it, you can see based, also you can test for the enzymes, 5-alpha uh, reductase and uh, aromatase, the two enzymes mm -hmm. that convert to estrogen and DHT. Yeah. If you have high levels of those, you know, okay, I'm losing a lot of my testosterone to conversion. Mm -hmm. So it's never even reaching the site. 
just by focusing on those, you could just effectively... seeing the enzymes there, high, high amount of enzymes. Correct, well. correct. Mm -hmm. And estrogen in men obviously can lead to fat gain. And mm -hmm. um, Right now we're uh, avoiding Zika. Uh, we got some mosquitoes <laughs> flying around outside here in Florida. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you don't want the estrogen, most men don't want excess estrogen, which um, can cause man boobs, gynecomastia in, mm -hmm. in men. Um, lots of negative effects with that. They've actually shown some correlation to um, prostate issues with estrogen as well, but even more so with DHT. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, prostate cancer is the fastest growing cancer in men mm -hmm. in the United States. Um, there are estimates now one in six men will get prostate cancer in their life, which oh, is, wow. is, is amazing and serious. And but guys, you don't want to mess with prostate. You lose your prostate. A lot of a lot of men lose their libido completely. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not just a simple operation. It's it's giving up some <laughs> big benefits. <laughs> yeah, really. So um, so you de developed the product to regulate these hormones yes. and and to, to keep them in balance. Let's uh, talk a little bit. What what is it? What does it do? So um, the key active in it is uh, in my research on heat shock proteins, mm -hmm. I was looking at the cactus. The cactus is probably the, yeah. the most proficient plant on the planet. It can live in extreme heat, cold, radiation, almost anything yeah, you can yeah. throw at it. Mm -hmm. It adapts. It adapts better than any plant on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, so it has a flower. It's sex organ. And in its flower, it adapts and regulates its hormones better than anything that we've studied so wow. far. So we said, okay, <laughs> does that yeah. translate to human beings? Mm -hmm. And sure enough. Through the they, research, it showed that did, did? They did the research and showed up to 80% inhibition of both estrogen and DHT. Now that's unique. They found things that inhibit DHT, like saw palmetto, mm -hmm. or estrogen, like some of the other estrogen blockers out on the market, but not both, and not by eight, over 80% in cells, human cell studies. Wow. That was incredible. So they did two follow-up human uh, clinical trials to say, well, okay, if it, if it inhibits DHT this well, will it affect prostate health? Mm -hmm. And sure enough, prostate issues were reduced up to 80%. Wow. Three months and a nine-month trial. Mm -hmm. So used for long-term, still effective, mm -hmm. and safe and effective. So I was just amazed by this research and wondering why this is not out in the public. So bring it out to the public, absolutely. But not mm -hmm. only for prostate, but for by by inhibiting those two, you're allowing more of your free T to actually reach the receptor site, imparting mm -hmm. all the benefits that you're looking for without the negative side effects of elevated T levels. So to me, it was like the best of all worlds because I would never produce a testosterone product that put people at risk for prostate health or other negative side effects. I don't want that. That's yeah. not what I want personally. That's never what I would do for somebody else. But when I found something that actually helped with the testosterone at the same time helped with the prostate and all the negative side effects, I'm like, this is ideal. This is the proper way to work with the human body to optimize all five of those and get it into its place where it works ideally. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is less of the T is needed to be elevated, even though you are optimizing it. Remember, mm -hmm. it boosts uh, DHEA by 32%. So, you're so it's boosting DHEA, but it's, it's cutting out estrogen and DHT, so it's not messing right. with T. Right, and it's okay. allowing your body to say how much it needs to convert of the DHEA to testosterone. Mm -hmm. So you're not forcing a too high a level of testosterone imparting negative So it lets it do its own function. Correct. You're just giving it basically all of its ability to operate at its peak wow. efficiency. Wow, that's fascinating. Yes. Yeah. Working with the body mm -hmm. instead of trying to tell it what to do and send it into all kinds yeah. of wacky, different uh, negative uh, yeah, effects. Yeah. So, so yeah. So uh, after three months of being on the market, it was nominated for Best Sports Nutrition Product of the Year, and that's by Supply Side, who is the uh, group that covers all of the nutritional supplement ingredients in the entire United mm -hmm. States. So it's by the peers who actually study the, the ingredients themselves and choosing us as uh, number one with our first product was, was exciting. Mm -hmm. And so they can get that on your, your website, right? Yeah, they can go to cleanmachineonline.com and uh, you can order that and uh, we'll yeah, post it. We'll, we'll have a, a promo code right here that you can see, uh, you can get a discount for what? 20% off. 20% off? Okay, yes. yeah, 20% off. Yep. You can right use here. that code anytime, all the time, so okay. for any products. Absolutely, and you got another product here. So let's talk a little bit about vegans and their 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 dietary protein and their their intake. Yeah, so you know, as a as a 
you know, long-term vegan, I wanted to help people um, learn how to make transitions, still get the physical fitness results they're looking for, mm -hmm. uh, but do it in the most efficient way. Um, so the research on uh, whey protein, which is the gold standard of bodybuilders, mm -hmm. Uh, showed that the reason whey protein works so well is it's because it's higher in branched chain amino acids. Mm -hmm. And that's to help a baby calf grow into a cow quickly. Yeah. Right. So you want that growth. Um, but what was lacking in plant proteins is the branched chains. It's lower in branched chain amino acids. Um, so specifically for people who are trying to gain muscle, you need more branched chain am amino acids mm -hmm. in order to stimulate. So. Uh, on the outside of the cell, there are receptor sites. There are two key receptor sites that create the anabolic effect. Um, one is insulin for mm -hmm. carbohydrates uh, and fats, and the other is for specifically leucine. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what are the three in there? Yeah, leucine it? is one of the three mm -hmm. branch chain amino acids, and they're called Same. branch chains because they have a specific branched chain structure uh, to their um, molecular structure. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So there are three, um, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Yeah. And these three are important, but specifically leucine is important for stimulating that. Now what happens is that trigger causes uh, the amino acids to enter the cell, similar to insulin allowing fat and carbohydrates to enter the cell to be used for building materials. Mm -hmm. And then the whole protein synthesis can start. So I looked at the research and showed there were two studies on plant proteins, one on rice protein, and they showed that you could get the same anabolic effects as whey if you ate a lot more of the mm -hmm. protein. And what that does is get the branched chain amino acids up to a high enough level where you're hitting that window of branched chains mm -hmm. that's stimulating muscle protein synthesis. So there's a key window there that they've shown anything above that doesn't stimulate any more growth. Mm -hmm. But you do want to get in that range where it's stimulating the ideal amount of growth. Absolutely. So they did another one on pea and they found it about 50 grams of protein uh, mm -hmm. to be consumed um, prior and, and post-workout. Um, so there was a so lot. So those are high numbers for both those. Yeah. yeah. So, so to get that in a, uh -huh. in a vegan diet, it's kind of a lot of food consumption if mm -hmm. you're not doing um, a plant protein powder per se. Um, so I said, well, instead of all this overconsumption of protein to try to get them the ideal stimulation of muscle growth, mm -hmm. why not just add the branch chains back into it? Mm -hmm. So they did research on that and found that by adding branch chains to the protein, you could increase muscle protein synthesis by 33%. Oh, wow, that's so significant. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is no small change. Yeah, that's not small at all. That yeah. is a, a, a big difference. And mm -hmm. by doing that, you don't need as much protein. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying you can actually use less protein just by adding a little bit of branch chains to it. You can get maximum So you're cutting growth. down your ammonia levels Correct. by adding this down. Right, that's ammonia cool. and all the, the, mm -hmm. the taxation on the liver and the kidneys too as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and plus all the excess food and calories that mm -hmm. you consume. I mean, anything that we eat like tofu, tofu's great, but it's kind of high in fat. Yeah. So all those extra protein calories you're, you're getting from the tofu, you're mm -hmm. also getting a bunch of fat calories. Yeah. So you can reduce your fat calorie intake and all your total calorie intake mm -hmm. and still get the maximum amount of proteins. To me, that's it. And there's no calories in branch chains. Mm -hmm. So you're substituting a lot of <laughs> calories for no calories. Yeah. That means you can use less protein or eat less protein foods and have less taxation on the system. And it's a beautiful thing. You get the muscle growth that you're looking for. Wow. So again, these are uh, most of the branch chains out on the market. And one of the reasons why this specific branch chain was, was developed by me is because most of the branch chains on the market are were originally made from human hair or duck feathers. Really? Yes. Wow. Kind of a little bit of big factor. Right, cannibalistic wow. there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so next time you get a haircut, remember that. Yeah, that's uh, the sweeping it up. Don't, and don't it try there. that at home. So instead of hair, human hair and duck feathers, <laughs> what are you using? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, we, ours is uh, from fermented uh, non-GMO corn. Mm -hmm. So food, you know, mm -hmm. real food. Yeah. <laughs> the stuff that you eat. <laughs> <laughs> meant to eat, not yeah, duck meant feathers. To eat, yeah. Um, so uh, the reason it's a, a fermentation process, I mm -hmm. wanted a very natural process. It's the same process that the human body uses. Our probiotics are a basic 
giant fermenter. Mm -hmm. um, they, through the fermentation process, they break down proteins even further that allow them to enter the bloodstream as amino acids. So you're cutting down the time it takes to Absolutely. create these amino acids. Well, not only that, a lot of people feel a real energized effect, even though it has no stimulants whatsoever really? at all. Yeah, people say, wow, this is making me really energy. And it's because it's an excitatory. You've mm -hmm. got a lot of basically uh, nutrition into the system and the cells get excited mm -hmm. and you can feel that metabolic lift yeah really people actually experience a nice energetic uh, wow. sensation from okay it. yeah but it's really working with your body to get the maximum amount of nutrients in mm -hmm. to make sure that you're doing it so there are two different ways of using branch chain amino acids I, I don't think a lot of people understand that there are two very clear reasons, two different times to take it for two mm -hmm. different very purposes. What, during uh, exercise? Correct. So okay. uh, one of the most popular ways to take it is either just prior or during exercise. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is if you're doing exercise, especially intense workouts mm -hmm. or cardio, um, the body can become slightly catabolic, which yeah. means it will start tearing down some muscle tissue uh, to get those branch chains out and use them. Well, if you've got blanched, branch chains in the bloodstream already, the body doesn't need to go catabolic. So it ends up preserving the muscle that you have. So that's yeah. what you don't, yeah. most people don't realize that when you exercise, you actually break down some muscle and then rebuild it back a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So you're taking a little step backwards to go forwards. Mm -hmm. By doing this, by having those branch chains available and the body not breaking that down, you're preserving that, then you can build on top so of that. So you're getting better gains that way. Exactly. Okay. So you're preserving the muscle, not losing the muscle mm -hmm. during catabolic phase. The second way to do it is after your workout with a protein shake or a protein meal, add it to it for increasing the muscle protein synthesis. Mm -hmm. So not only are you not losing as much muscle, but you're gaining more muscle yeah. through increased muscle protein wow. synthesis. It's the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's what makes branch chains one of the fastest growing in popularity right now of all the supplements. Mm -hmm. And I so you have two different flavors on your... Uh, Correct. Of yours. What's, what, what are they? This fruit, one's here is fruit, fruit punch and unflavored. So and that's okay. specifically for the use. So if you're using it prior to your workout, you can use fruit punch in just water mm -hmm. and it tastes great. Um, then if you're adding it to a protein shake, we have it for unflavored for people who want that or for people who just want it stripped down to basically nothing. The only other things we have in it are sunflower lecithin and that's to help the branch chains dissolve into water mm -hmm. um, and then uh, coconut water. Uh, to help with electrolytes. So, okay. Yeah, so it's a great combination, and that's the only three ingredients in the unflavored. So, so you, you say coconut something. water, it's dehydrated coconut water? Yeah, that, dehydrated okay. coconut water powder. So it makes it a powder. Yep. That's exactly. fascinating. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I, I know that uh, coconut will help uh, anything that it's combined with get into the bloodstream faster. So it, it picks up whatever it is and brings it to the cell. It's a nice transport. Yeah, coconut, coconut water is actually one of the few things in nature that can be used uh, uh, instead of plasma. You can yeah, actually take so coconut for water. A, a cell infusion <laughs> there, yeah. So Blood one, infusion, of the, yeah. one of the cool mm -hmm. things I like about coconut water, too, that it is a um, cell regulator. Mm -hmm. So the coconut water has some, some unique growth properties in it. One, it helps a coconut grow very quickly and big, mm -hmm. but in a very controlled way. So it helps regulate so that there's no uncontrolled growth. And obviously we don't want that. So this is a great way to get all the benefits, but make sure that there's some growth regulators in there to make sure you're building the Wow, so it's correctly. all natural in that sense. Yes. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> yes, so wow. it's using what nature does best and helping the body do accomplish its goals ideally. Mm -hmm. Wow, so, so you've got the, uh, the hormone regulation, you've got the, the protein, uh, regulation in a sort on the the vegan sense and uh, what about is we got a product for fats for yeah so essential essential fatty acids so what's, what's the problem with uh, let's say there, there's krill oil out there I know sure. there, there's fish oil um, a lot of them are extracted through an ethanol extract and things like that and could have heavy metals heavy in metals yeah well. absolutely uh, since they're come the from the ocean yeah correct all the, the ocean. pollutants uh, all the plasticizers mm -hmm. the plastics that are in the ocean and none of that's vegan too so. correct as well so okay. uh, actually some research is done by the uh, WHO the World Health Organization showing that up to 50% of all the life in the ocean is already gone really just killed in the so last so over taxation or overfishing yeah. pollution and climate change okay those three things have dropped the population of our oceans by half mm -hmm. um, they say 
by the rate that we're going within the next 20 to 30 years, we could wipe out the ocean completely. Wow. Yes. That's devastating. That's frightening. Yeah. In 40 years, we've caused half of the population of the ocean, all fishes. Now, if you look at the fishes that we harvest, it's something even higher than that, like 60, 70, 80% of those fishes are already gone. Wow. Wiped out. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yes. Okay. And then some people say, well, I do salmon or whatever. Well, that's even bigger. You yeah. Know? Um, they're almost all wiped out. Actually, most of the farm are grown on, on farms right now. All the fish are grown on farms right now. But they're grown in such small things, they stunt their growth. So they had to actually start adding steroids to the fish to really? get them to grow into small things. Cause fish and that's in uh, farm-raised fish? Farm-raised fish, right. So you can find hormones in farm-raised fish. Right. Fish steroids, naturally yeah. know don't grow larger than your environment. The yeah. bigger the environment, the bigger they grow. Whale in the ocean, small fish in small ponds. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. That's so that they're cooperative with their environment. Mm -hmm. But in these big tanks where they're being raised in fish farms, they're jammed in. So normally that would stop their growth. So they give them hormones to try to force them to grow larger than they should in that environment. Wow. Then they're all swimming in their own feces, so they get these raging disease states that co-op so they put tons of antibiotics in them. So all these hormones and drugs and antibiotics are going into the fish on these farm raised fish. You know, you say, oh, they're farm raised, that's better. Yeah. Oh, heck no, it's not. Yeah. But there aren't any, hardly any left in the wild, so they have to do this. Mm -hmm. You combine those two things alone, and we need to go to a, a plant-based source that's sustainable, that's ecological, and that isn't full of all these drugs mm -hmm. and, and pollutants and toxins and heavy metals. Um, uh, by the way, the fish population, a lot of the fish comes from anchovies, sardines, and some of the smaller fishes like that. Um, they were I know the smaller fishes have less like mercury and, and toxins in them. Correct. So that was popular. Chile was one of the biggest places where, where they? they were harvesting these. The populations were so low they thought they were going to extinct and banned fishing for an entire year because of it. Wow. It shot the price of fish oil up and we're going to continue to see the price of fish oil escalate because of the scarcity and mm -hmm. because of the fishing demands. So, so what's, what's the alternative to this? What, the what alternative is a plant base. You've got to okay. go plant based. But you know, when I was doing the research, flax was okay, chia, hemp, okay. They had mm -hmm. benefits, definitely, health well, benefits. Well, so our users know, uh, what is the benefits of fat, essentially, in the diet? <laughs> <laughs> most, most people know fats as uh, cheeses and uh, burgers, and Correct. you find fat in your potato chips and things like that, but. Right, so there <laughs> are monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated mm -hmm. fats and poofas or mufas. But uh, there are a class of uh, fats called omega-3s. Now, these are the healthy fats, the good fats, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, because our diets are really high in omega-6s and omega-9s. Yes. yes. So omega-3s are basically anti-inflammatory, where omega-6s, a lot of omega-6s, are pro-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. Which uh, infl inflammation is good for the body. It is. We yeah. do need a little we bit of inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, uh, muscle gains are triggered by inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, but all that needs is the regulation of, of the stress. So you need a... Correct. Okay. So there's a healthy mm -hmm. inflammatory response that we all need. And then there is what's called chronic inflammation. Mm -hmm. So chronic inflammation can lead to cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, stroke, uh, arthritis, diabetes is an inflammatory response, mm -hmm. but that's because we're keeping the body in an inflammatory state. Saying let it relax and get exactly. back to homeostasis. Heal. So the inflammation needs to happen immediately to draw the healing process in, but if there's inflammation all over the body, the body just becomes run down and taxed and can't, yeah. can't cooperate with that. Mm -hmm. Now we can balance those inflammation with anti-inflammatory substances like having omega-3. So a good like four to one ratio would be ideal omega-3s to six. Um, now there are good uh, omega-6s that are anti-inflammatory as well called GLA, which mm -hmm. actually ahi flour also contains. Interesting. Yes. Okay. So, um, so it's uh, got its own unique omega-6 in it. In indeed, an anti-inflammatory omega-6 wow. instead of a pro-inflammatory. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which is unique, fish does not have GLA in it. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, these are things that you're finding that don't. So, all right, back to the omega-3s. Omega-3s are essential fatty acids, meaning our body, we can't live without them. Mm -hmm. um, so you have two essential groups basically, which are essential amino acids, means our body needs them to survive. So it regulates our brain function there. Correct. Uh, it keeps the, the cell membranes together. Correct. 
Uh, basically, all of our nerves are covered with what's it called? A myelin a, sheath there, a yeah. myelin mm -hmm. sheath, yep, exactly. Um, and we can see that breakdown in diseases like multiple sclerosis or things like that, mm -hmm. uh, or nerve damage. Um, that's usually what's broken. And once that sheath is there, just think of it as an electrical cord. If you take the rubber off the electric, so it's exposed to whatever exactly. kind of damage can and cause. Exactly, can be it. severed, uh -huh. can be interrupted. Yeah, and that's what happens. So all nerve function, most cellular function de depends on these omega threes. Heart function, brain health, um, DHA and EPA. So like uh, post stroke would be really good uh, to up your omega omega threes. Uh, to rebuild you know, the, on the neuronal connections and things like that. Based on the research, that's what it's all pointing to. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, EPA is uh, more commonly taken for heart health, DHA for brain health. Mm -hmm. um, some great research on that uh, all the way across the board. So uh, interesting study, the uh, Norfolk cohort study, and I'll po we can post the link on your Okay, yeah, it'll be too. in the description. Mm -hmm. um, it, it showed that actually uh, vegans had higher DHA levels than fish eaters. Wow. So I was like, well, how can that happen? So because this recent study had shown that ALA didn't convert very well to DHA. Mm -hmm. But if, if we are getting all of our omega-3s from ALA, like flax and chia and nuts and stuff like that, which have alpha linoleic acid, mm -hmm. which converts to DHA. If that's the only source we're getting it, we're not getting preformed DHA, like from fish. Mm -hmm. How are we having higher levels? Yeah. So here's what I deduced. And this is, to, to be clear, this is just theory. It's not been proven in science, but I think it will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll we'll be waiting on that research. It'll, yes. it'll come in the future. Yeah. Is, is the body um, through um, uh, genomics actually switches its genes to produce an enzyme, but when something present, it switches that gene off because you don't need that enzyme to convert. Exactly, yeah. So mm -hmm. if you got ALA and you need an enzyme to, to convert it to DHA, that enzyme then gets produced, mm -hmm. right? But if you bring DHA into the system, the body says, I don't need to produce that enzyme because you've got DHA already present. Mm -hmm. Similar to testosterone or a lot of other different things. If you exogenously or introduce it from outside the body, like eating it or consuming it or injecting it, yeah. then the body says, I don't need to produce my own. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, it's efficient that way. Yeah. So what's happening is when the DHA is coming in, that is how much DHA you get. And it shuts off the production or reduces the production of the enzyme that converts ALA to DHA. Since we're consuming a lot more ALA, ALA the enzyme's not there. The okay. enzyme's not there and mm -hmm. we're not getting the conversion. So by introducing DHA from fish or even from algae, mm -hmm. you could actually lower your <laughs> levels of DHA in wow. the bloodstream. Now, that's why I'm a big proponent of getting your DHA from ALA because mm -hmm. it showed, look, vegans actually had higher DHA levels than people eating fish or yeah. consuming DHA. So um, that was a breakthrough study. It really shifted the ideas on it. And what they were looking at before is saying, well, wait a minute, we don't produce enough of the enzyme to convert ALA efficiency. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because they were eating fish. They were only looking at non-vegans when they were doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, we don't produce the enzyme if it's already present. Yeah. So it's not that we don't produce the enzyme, mm -hmm. it's that we're not asking the body to produce the enzyme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you go to a completely vegan diet or don't have an external source of DHA being introduced by algae or fish, then the body starts producing lots of this enzyme. Mm -hmm. And we actually become more efficient at, be at converting ALA to DHA mm -hmm. than people who are taking it from an external yeah, source. Yeah, yeah. So I'm one of, I'm one of the people who says, don't take DHA, mm -hmm. get it from a good ALA sources. So ahi flour is a great ALA source. So it's not the DHA that seemed to be the problem. It was the EPA. Mm -hmm. When they looked at vegans in that same study, they showed vegans did have a lower EPA level. Mm -hmm. So EPA- But is fish a, eaters had higher levels. Had okay. higher levels. Mm -hmm. So that was not the case. It was conversion from a different thing called SDA or stereodonic acid. So you go ALA, SDA, then EPA. Mm -hmm. So that's the basics, a little oversimplified, but for conversation <laughs> purposes, this is it. So your body has to produce ALA, uh, consume ALA, like mm -hmm. from flax or chia or hemp, and then it has to convert it to SDA, and then it converts it to EPA. 
every time you do those steps, mm -hmm. there's a loss in conversion, so you end up with a lot smaller amount. Mm -hmm. So the process was I have to eat a lot more of the ALA to get proper amounts of DHA. But that meant overloading with flax, which some studies say may suppress testosterone levels, not so much of a desired effect, um, uh, or chia or hemp. And both are high and really high in fiber, and you get bloated stomach. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. again, not ideal, but it's possible to achieve it through high dosing. Mm -hmm. um, so I was saying, well, what about the SDA? Where is that found? And there's no SDA in flax. There's none in chia, and only just a tiny little bit in hemp. But I'm like, there's got to be a better plant source out there mm -hmm. of SDA. So Inter you found this plant here. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. ahi flower. This, uh, it's UK comes from the UK. Comes so where it's natively in, grown. Grown in the uh, the UK, okay. exactly. And um, then it's uh, made into an oil and then brought here in the United States. But ahi flower has the highest source of SDA on the planet of any known plant out there. Wow! So much so, in a published human study that just came out in January, mm -hmm. showed 400 percent more. Uh, conversion to EPA than flax. Wow. Four times <laughs> better than the number one selling plant-based mm -hmm. omega-3 flax out there. So that's not just a step forward. That's a quantum leap. In, in <laughs> that is significantly significant. <laughs> yes. So uh, what that means is you can use a lot less, but it's a lot more effective. Mm -hmm. They're actually going to be uh, coming out with a, a new study, which will probably be out maybe by the time this is, but shortly. And, um, uh, maybe October, September, mm -hmm. um, that will show uh, some really amazing uh, research and results on inflammation mm -hmm. using ahi flower. Wow. So I'll be excited. I'm excited to share for that. that. And yeah. when it when it comes out, we'll we'll post a link so you can see it. Cool. Yeah. So that that and that it has a good source of GLA too, which again is anti-inflammatory. Not found in a lot of things. Um, uh, is exciting and it makes it a huge breakthrough. And this is all non-GMO, just so they know. Non-GMO. It's, it's well sourced. Yes, it's non-GMO. It's actually patented and uh, it's, uh, so this is the only company, it's the only, we're actually the first and only sports nutrition company in the world with it. So Really? We're trying to bring you the absolute best and bring it to you first before right. everybody else jumps heard on it the here. bandwagon. <laughs> Got it, yeah. <laughs> yes, so. Um, so that was a big deal. As, a, as someone hoping to try to get more people onto a plant-based diet and do it in the ideal, healthy way, mm -hmm. um, these are the, the key things. I wanted people to get the same results using plant proteins, gaining muscle, yeah. without having to use animal proteins. Now you can. I wanted to get all the benefits that you could find in fish oils, but not using or hurting the environment or the animals. Mm -hmm. Now you can and you can do it in the optimal, healthy ways. That's beautiful. So these Absolutely. are the three key things that are really shown to improve. Um, actually, there's some preliminary research, more to come, uh, on showing that omega-3s can actually increase muscle protein synthesis. And they've measured up to 25% increase and reduce muscle loss by 22%. So this is some exciting new yeah, preliminary research. We need mm -hmm. uh, more research to back that up. But I'm excited to see more research on it. So yeah. all the health benefits plus the muscle gains in all three of these different products and do it in a natural way that works with your body. I think that's the approach. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do is really give the best nutrition out there possible, help people achieve these things on a completely plant-based mm -hmm. diet. So you can get this all on their website, which you, we'll post on the link below and uh, use, use the code that we're going to post too to get 20% off. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you for watching. Thank uh, you. It's been a pleasure, Jeff. Thank you for having me. It's all exciting to share the, the news and, uh, and um, you know, really show the different options that are available mm -hmm. out there to be clean, healthy, natural, and still get the optimal results mm -hmm. you're looking for. Thanks, guys, for watching, and stay beautiful. Thank you.